Shoo, 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 shoo. Uh, welcome to the Drake cast. We're gonna be talking about all of Drake's albums. <laughs> We're gonna be starting from top to bottom. Am I in the wrong room? Yeah. We're starting with Take Care. Uh, You're gonna start with Take Care? Yeah. You're not even gonna start with, like, Thank Me Later? Nah, fuck that shit. I mean, like. That's weak shit. I better find your loving. I better find your love. I better find your love. I better find your love. That's a great. And then, like, the music video was, like, all about, like, this girl is getting him into, like, trouble with gangs in Jamaica. Yeah. I was like, damn, Drake's coming in hot. Wait, was that this? I thought that that was the video for... I, I got my eyes on you. Nope. you everything Let's find your I love. See. Let's find your love. Well, there is a music video for that song. That music video is him, like, Drake, like, involved Maybe in the mob. Maybe it's the sequel. Maybe it is, honestly. <laughs> Drake is that Drake kind of cinematic guy. universe. <laughs> the DCU? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's actually what DC stands yeah, yeah, yeah. for. <laughs> Drake yeah. Comics. <laughs> oh, dear God. Actually, though, like, I feel like that's the, the one thing that can save music videos. Okay. I'm a huge fan of music videos. You are. I watch music videos all the time as a kid. And, like, every once in a while, time. every once in a while, like, I do kind of, like, watch music videos. I think that they're excellent. I, I just think they're a great idea. It's, like, a visual companion to go along with the song. It's, like, why wouldn't you want that? Oh, I mean, I... I They've fallen off in recent years because, you know, like, MTV has changed. And, like, MTV used to play just music videos yeah. all the time. It used to be just a steady stream of music well, videos. Well, doesn't MTV stand for music TV? Music television, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. But... Like, I also understand that, like, you can talk about music. Like, you can have, like, a show that's just, uh, like, talking about music. It doesn't. You don't have to be constantly playing music to be music television. Definitely, definitely. And then, like, Much Music used to play music videos occasionally, too. Did you ever watch Much On Demand? No, I don't know what that That was, is. like, my favorite show. I would come home from school, and I would watch Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, and then I would watch Much On Demand. What, what's Much On Demand? Lunch On Demand? <laughs> Lunch On Demand. Much On Demand was a show... Um, it was a live show. It was kind of like, have you ever heard of like TRL, Total Request Live in the States? No, I don't know what that okay, is never either. Fuck, never fucking mind. Anyways, MOD was um, a live show that they did every afternoon at like the Much Music Studios. Did they have like hosts? Yeah, they have yeah. hosts. Um, Leia Miller and oh, Matt Babel yeah. and Sarah Taylor. And, I know um, what that is. Uh, D- uh, Devin... Sultan Deke, that was his name. Wow. I knew he had a crazy ass name. Sick name. Yeah, shout out to them. I love them so much. Mm. I always like I wanted. I always now. like wanted to get famous. So I could be like interviewed by <laughs> like because like okay, so <laughs> this is this is going off track. Remind me that I'm talking about music videos. Okay. Really, um, they would also like you could like text their you could text your requests in with like a four digit number. Mm-hmm. They'd be like, if you want us to play this song next, text like blah 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 blah. If you want us to play oh, yeah, this yeah. song next, text blah blah I blah did blah. That blah. Once. Yeah, exactly. You get mad um, spam sent to your phone forever. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) yeah, it doesn't fucking stop. But, like, the hosts were also... It's so funny. The hosts were specifically picked and hired so that they could cover all of, like, genres of music. So, like, if a pop star was on, then Leah Miller would be doing the interview because Leah Miller was, like, cute and blonde and petite. Yeah. She would also interview, like, rock stars because she was hot. (laughs) And then, like, Matt Babel was black, so he would interview rap artists when they came on the show or like any artist of color that's cool and then like sarah taylor who's also black but she was like kind of alternative so like she would like like if solange knowles ever came on the show she would like interview solange she also kind of looks like solange um and then so- <laughs> devin sultan deke was like is it, is, pop stars <laughs> slash like um like top 40 hosts because he had like a blonde fringe hairdo at the time like Which all that super stuff. in super fucking in at the time um but yeah, um, that's where I would watch all of my music videos and yeah. shit like that. But and you were talking about music videos. I was talking about music videos. I was talking about music videos because I think that they're severely underrated. Mm. And I feel... Right. Drake's, Drake's Cinematic Universe. We were joking about that. <laughs> um, I think the way to bring back music videos into people's consciousness would to be to have like a music video universe where people are like... You, there's like a story and you get people addicted to it. And then like every time you release a new music video to go with your song... It both promotes your album really well and gets people excited about music videos again. Isn't that what sort of, I think music videos are dope. Isn't that sort of what Kendrick Lamar tries to do whenever he does a music video? A lot of his music videos are thematic. They're mm-hmm. very similar. But they don't follow one story. No, definitely not. Like, if you did, like, a 10-year 
story like the like MCU does. Like <laughs> but like just but with, with music videos. Friends, yeah. Just with music videos, you introduce like characters and shit like that. Oh, I'd be into it. I would eat that shit up. That would be cool. I would eat that shit for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Well, see, the thing with music videos is, like, music videos, to me, doesn't really seem like it's... It doesn't seem like the industry is really wanting to pursue music videos anymore. I know. It it just kind of seems like, oh... But yet they keep making them. We put it out. Well, because people like music videos. You know, there's people use music videos on YouTube to listen to the music. Yeah. Do people still do that? With, like, Spotify and stuff now? Maybe. Because, like, w- when I was a kid, we used to use YouTube as Spotify. Yeah. Before before we knew yeah, yeah. that we wanted something like Spotify. It's like Vivo. Remember Vivo's? Yeah, Vivo. Yeah. Vivo still... Totally. Like, like artists still have Vivo channels. The top... Like, the top 100 in YouTube has, like, 50 Vivos in it. Yeah. It's, like, all different Vivos. Yeah, exactly. It's just Vivo videos, which I don't really understand. I don't understand why you needed a whole separate channel to publish music videos on? Oh, it was because it would get so clogged so fast. Think about just think about think, think about like Justin Bieber's Vivo and how many music videos are on there. The guy's got like a hundred videos. I know, but like every every artist already had an official YouTube channel where they would post their music videos. So I don't understand where Vivo comes into the uh, I don't even I know what Vivo have, stands for. I'm I never have. I'll look it up. I don't think it stands for anything. I think it's just a name. I'm gonna, like, I'm, I'm gonna read about Vivo. V-O. But like yeah, um, I never really understood why that was necessary. I just felt like, you know, the record company produces the music video, so just put it on the artist's oh. official YouTube page? So you just answered your own question. Vivo is a hosting service as a joint venture among three major recording companies, being Universal Music Group, Sony Music Entertainment, and EMI, hmm. which are like... Oh, and then, and then Warner Music Group also joined. Okay. So, literally, the reason why there's so many Vivos is because every person, every, every company publishing music is in on this company. Mm-hmm. So, that's why, that's why they can do so many of them. But still, what is the point? You already own the song. No, it's because they're because being... It's on um, your label. So, what is the point of a whole other company? It just seems it just seems like a weird middleman. You know what I mean? No, it's because they're making millions of dollars. But they already make millions of dollars when the videos get hit, so why have another company? Well, there could be... It, well, tax reasons, probably. If uh, I had to take a guess. How, what do you mean to... Uh, how, how? Just separate taxing. It's just... you. Because if, if, you, if your company makes a... I mean, I am by no means an accountant mm-hmm. at all. Mm-hmm. But if, if you make... Like, for instance, if Warner Music Group did, like... I don't know. If they made $500 million a year, and then all of a sudden with this new like YouTube venture started making like three billion dollars a year that puts them in a different tax bracket mm-hmm. versus if, if we make another, a new company a whole other company that is ma- technically making five hundred thousand dollars a right. year right. Uh, you can skirt you, certain things right 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 but still um, get a tax from the success of the company and plus if you make if you make music videos to make money and they own the Vivo YouTube industry it means they're making a hundred percent of the money off of YouTube Mm-hmm. On Vivo, mm-hmm. so it's it's just a way to make money. Wow! It must like triple the profits. That's fucking it's fucking brilliant. <laughs> this is what it is. It's brilliant, but it's evil. <laughs> it is super evil. Pay fucking taxes. All the all the best ideas are evil, mm-hmm. unfortunately. In business, at least. Yeah. 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 Wow. Do you have a favorite music video? Hmm. That's a question. That's a question. I'm a, uh, I'm a, I don't know too many, but I'm a big fan of the Sum 41 in Too Deep video. Oh, in the With pool? The pool and in the, the empty yeah. pool? Mm-hmm. Instead I'm going under. I love that Stead song. Instead I'm going under. Dude, I fucking... Uh, I, Spotify gave me like a throwback playlist. Mm. It had that song on it. Mm-hmm. It had like that Jimmy Eat World song. The middle? Yeah. The it middle. just takes Big some time. time. Little girl, you're in the middle, middle after all. Everything. 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 <laughs> he does say it with, with like an A. Actually, I've seen them live. They're really good live. Uh, I don't I don't doubt that. And they're very nice about playing the middle. Like they play a couple of songs and then they like they like get the crowd hyped for it. They're, yeah, let's play they the start like the opening chords because you know like And then they're like, ah, everybody like sing this song. This is the song. Well, if you had a hit song, I feel like that's what you ought to do. Well, no. No, because like, if you have okay, so there, there are different kinds of one-hit wonders in my eyes. There are one-hit wonders who actually go on to continue to produce more music, and it's fine. Right. Um, fucking um, Get never it. gonna give you up, guy. 
Oh, Rick Astley. Rick Astley has like a whole discography. Yeah. And it's not bad. But it's a good singer. You know, he's like kept making music. He has that one song, um, um, Forever and Ever yeah. and yeah. Ever Too Far. Yeah. It's a good song. I love like, that song. it's fine. Um, but then there are other one hit wonders who just like never really, like their music career never really took off after yeah. the one album that produced their one hit, and they're just fine with that. And sometimes they'll still do concerts, and then like all people will do is ask them to play that one song, and you can tell that they're like a little depressed. Like the band um, Warrant, you know, she's my yeah, yeah. cherry pie. Um, that guy, Google him if you want to have a sad day. Aww. Because he, first of all, he passed away. A couple years ago now, like a while ago now, but like still more recently than the most than other like rock deaths that have happened. Um, he heavily regrets making that song. He oh, really? wrote it in like apparently they, it was one of those songs where they wrote it in like two minutes. Well, because the song is nonsense, and it was never supposed song, to be as but... big as it was. And then really? that was yeah, and like it was just supposed to be like a song on the album to like fill it up or something like that. It's so catchy though. I know, and then it blew up, and then that was all that they were known for. But he She's wanted to have like a so like a rock bad. career, like he wanted to have he wanted to be like iconic, and it just didn't fucking work out for him. Wow. And he like died of a drug overdose in a hotel room alone or something like sad like that. Fuck. <laughs> so, like and like I remember. Um, also, in my Much Music video days, I watched a lot of, uh, like, Much More Music, which was, like, Much Music before adults. Oh, okay. But I was a kid, and I would watch it, and they had those, like, VH1 green screen shows of, like, 80 worst heavy metal songs. <laughs> um, and, like, they were talking about, they were talking to him about that, and he just, I remember he got really serious when he was talking about that. He was like, I wish I could never, I wish I could go back in time and never write that song like i wish like i would fucking i would st i would shoot myself in the back of the head to stop myself from writing that song like he got really serious and like tears welled up in his eyes and i was like what the fuck god damn i, I fucking love cherry uh, pie like <laughs> the interview like leans towards um um uh, excuse me mr warren we were hoping you would do cherry pie <laughs> for us before you left tonight yeah yeah and he just fucking shoots the guy yeah well I mean I get I, so I, I get being upset about being a one hit wonder but at the same time like okay in the Jimmy Eat World example mm. so Jimmy Eat World they had a one they had a, their one hit mm -hmm. and then they went on to have like a pretty moderate career I mean like I saw them like four years ago like yeah, it so put, put it this way, the reason why I don't think Jimmy E. World is salty about singing the middle is because they know the only people coming to their concerts are fans of their band. Mm -hmm. Like, and then mm -hmm. I guess, like, how did you end up going? So it was a festival. Yeah. Um, Metric and City and Color were headlining. Wow. So we were there concert. for them, but then, like, um, it was, like, they were, like, Yukon Blonde, Serena Ryder, she has that song, like, gotta get up, Yeah. listen to me. Yeah. Um, who else whoa, was there? Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Yukon Blonde, Serena Ryder, Metric and City and Color, I think, and Jimmy Eat World. Yeah, those were those were the bands that were playing. So like they were they were in and amongst. We were there to see like Metric and City and Color, but they were just kind of there. And I was like, oh cool, I like the middle. I'll just like go listen to the middle and like you know wait for Metric to show up. Did you recognize any other songs of theirs? I didn't, but I did enjoy myself. They're really good live, and uh, I recommend that people listen to the rest of their discography, quite frankly, because the songs that they did play, other than the middle, I enjoyed. They That's were really good. Cool. They were good. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like, I appreciate that attitude of, like, yeah, we know people are excited to hear the song that we're mm -hmm. famous for, mm -hmm. but, like, I feel like the people who are at this concert wouldn't have, like, in, in a festival scenario, like, sure, you sort of just see yeah. who's ever playing. Yeah. But, in a, like... I still feel like people who didn't want to see Jimmy Eat World, like, didn't go. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you wanted to see them, you, you definitely went to go see them. Mm -hmm. So when they're like, oh, we're having a fun time playing music, and it's like, you know what? Let, let's play the song. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I hope that that magic of, like, we love playing this song never goes away. Yeah. Like, I, I always feel bad about singers who are really salty about, the, like, the one-hit wonder they have. Yeah. Like, I feel like there's one there's one of two ways you can do it. You can go the Warrant route. Yeah. Or you can go, like, the Don McLean route. Yeah. Where it's like, I wrote American Pie <laughs> to pay for every meal that I'll have for the rest of my life. And yeah. it totally did. Yeah. Oh, my God. Side note. Yeah. I was listening to... One of my favorite radio stations, my only yeah, yeah. favorite radio station. Shout out to ninety two point one, the Jewel. Yeah, based in Cambridge. <laughs> that that station was on your car when you first got it. Yeah, and you Has just, not let you me just down. never changed it. It's my favorite radio station. You never changed it because it, it's never let us down. They have an awesome lunch segment. Mm -hmm. called Lunchtime Trivia mm -hmm. where they give like really awesome trivia questions and yeah. they have like, people call in sometimes it lasts like an hour like people don't yeah. always get the question right mm. and I'm like wow that's actually really good trivia it's actually kind of hard 
Point being, respect. I am disappointed, however, yeah. in the jewel because they played American Pie. Oh, and they like did a radio edit? And they edit? shortened it. Yeah. By like half the song. Yeah. And like, okay, it's like a seven minute song. Yeah, it's like an eight or nine minute song. But you can, like, that'd be like, that'd be like watching, oh, I don't know, big fucking watching like on the waterfront and then halfway through the movie, the credits roll. You get to like, I could have been a contender and then you just like cut to black. <laughs> just like, do 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 the credits roll, like, oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. Speaking of funny credit editing, have you ever heard of the edited version of Toy Story that was floating around on the Pirate Bay? No. So, when Toy Story 3 first came out, um, people were pirating it back when the Pirate Bay was a thing. Mm-hmm. So, a bunch of people, a bunch of, a bunch of trolls went online and were like, we're going to upload this version of Toy Story 3 mm-hmm. where as they're going, they're in the furnace and they're going towards the flame, it just phased to black in the credits roll. Oh, I have heard about this. <laughs> I, I did hear about I this. I would... Die. I couldn't actually watch it. I feel like, like I feel like we would start watching that show to be like, oh ha ha ha, we're gonna like watch, we're gonna watch the edited version of Toy Story three, ha ha ha, and then like it gets to the part where it's in the furnace and you're just like, okay, turn it off. That is a really intense moment. Turn it off, please. Turn it off. It's a good movie. That's a really intense I saw, moment. Oh God, I saw Toy Story three in theaters with my friend Ryan, but like, so like Ryan was a, Ryan was older than me. He was um a, the son of one of my mom's friends. And I actually, we just, like, liked each other all the time. Still do. Shout out to Ryan. Um, but uh, he was a grade above me in high school. So, like, he had his older friends who I just, like, they were nice people, but I just didn't know them. And they would talk to me, but we weren't friends. Right. We just, we just didn't click that much. But saw Toy Story 3 with him anyways. And I was, it, it was like going to the movies by myself, you know? Like... I sit in a dark room with three people that you don't know and one person that you do know and you all just have that one person in common. It's awkward. It's uncomfortable. And I didn't want to show emotion right. because I didn't know these people. I didn't feel comfortable bawling my eyes out. So I'm just like sitting in the theater, like like hold, like hold, literally holding my breath because I, if I breathed, I would just start crying. Right. You know what I mean? No, I was the same way. Like I remember like that last, the moment between like, Andy and Woody was mm-hmm. happening. Mm-hmm. And... Um, Sorry about that. Small, small hiccup. Uh, but like I was saying, yeah. I remember I was in the movie theater and I was with my brother uh, and that last moment between like Woody and Andy, Yeah. they were talking. So long, partner. And like I, lo- I looked over at my, I was trying not to cry because I was about to be a big boy. Mm-hmm. And I looked over at Duncan and he was fucking bawling. <laughs> nice. So I started to cry yeah, like, immediately. I was yeah. like, I have, I have the pass to cry. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, the head crier has allowed you to cry. <laughs> I, I, I used to cry in movies all the time, actually. I cry in movies constantly. I never used to cry in movies, but um, um, now I do all the time. I cry, like... I cry when, like, something funny and wholesome happens, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I think... I think um, I've, I've let myself be I think I cried when I saw by... Second Act with your mom and Emma. Oh, like, really? I think, I, yeah, I think I cried in it a little bit i cry all the time but i try i try really hard i don't know why i bother hiding it it's really obvious that i'm like wiping away tears Mm -hmm. like sometimes i'll like rest my hand on my cheek and like like pull at my skin you know kind of like when you're like do like the lower eye wipe yeah you know when you're really tired in class and you like rest your hand on your cheek and your cheek like gets pulled up a little bit and then i'll like wipe my hand <laughs> down my face. Your secret hand wipe technique. And it's like, you're obviously wiping your face, Sam. Like, yeah. <laughs> just, just cry. Just, why? Why well, actually? I just uh, don't want people to judge when I cry. Well, I mean, it's like, like... Like the point in the movie when I cry at. If, if you cry... If, if I cry at the part where that's the movie's obviously trying to make you cry, then, like, fuck you, whatever. Like, the movie wants me to feel this way. Fuck off. Mm-hmm. But, like, sometimes I cry at stupid parts that don't necessarily warrant tears. Like, I think I started crying in Black Panther... Just because it's Black Panther and like I mean I, I actually I was so filled with emotion uh, during because we okay when, when we go see Infinity War and f- like full disclosure like me and Sam are big fans of comic books. Well, uh, I yeah I, I've never read comic books, but I do like graphic novels. I like graphic novels and like comic books. I'm just super, scared to superheroes. Go, I'm just scared to get into comic books because if I buy a comic book, I don't want some like incel to ask me like, oh, so like on page seventy three of Marvel issue sixty nine four twenty, what's the seven hundred eighty third line that Cap says? So like, I'll, I mean, okay, I'll be I'll be honest with you, like, I 
I'm sure that's completely like the, the comic book experience is different for men and women for sure. Yeah. But I'd be hard pressed to see that happen to you in like an indigo. Like, that's no, where, that's where I buy like, my I want to go to an actual comic book store. Right, but like if you, but the way, but the way you, like a, no one, well, I should say no one, plenty of people do, but like to read comic book singles is fucking stupid. Like it just doesn't make any sense. Mm. Like you have to either buy the monthly issues before you know it, you'll have a thousand of them. Yeah. And then, or you just wait till they're uh, collected in graphic novels and read them. I know, but I'd like to support. There are a couple comic book stores in KW, and I'd like yeah. to support them. Right, but I'm and saying, they sell graphic novels. Like I'm not gonna yeah. buy singles. You're you're right about buying singles. Like it's a, it's just a huge. It's like it's like being subscribed to a magazine. If I before you know, you have books, all these fucking magazines in your house that you're never gonna fucking read again. Yeah, so if, if I if I collected out. comic books, I would you know do it. But I don't collect comic books. I like I like to read comic books. Yeah. Well, when it comes down to it, like I think like well, you also have to remember that none of the stuff current in the current comic continuity before like the 2000s is even canon anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, they do they do universal resets so often. No, but it's, like, a part of pop culture history, and, like, I don't know, I just think it'd be cool to know about what went on with them. It's, it's pretty, like, it's, it's honestly, just read on the internet. Like, I guess. just fill in the gaps with the internet. But anyway, me and Sam are superhero fans, and we enjoy the movies. So we went to go see Infinity War on opening weekend, mm -hmm. and it was a really crowded theater which we usually try to avoid when we see movies mm -hmm. for the obvious reasons mm -hmm. and I, I have the to the memes just come in so hot after opening weekend you just you, you won't understand and yeah, like yeah. I also out. just you know like it's exciting I, I, I like it when it's uh, like it's like when I went to go see the Dragon Ball movie like so many yeah. like minded people yeah. are here and they're, we're all enjoying this movie it's an event. and we're all fans like yeah. And uh, more on that in a minute. But the thing with Infinity War, like I back to the original conversation about crying in a movie theater. Like I swear to God, I teared up when Thor showed up. Yeah. And the only reason why is not because like the moment was awesome. Yeah. But it it was it was that moment combined with the actual cheers from the audience, like yeah. people being like, yeah. yeah. Like I don't know. I, I, it was really fun. Like and like you and I hate it when people clap in movies. Like I just think it's really it's like clapping when a plane lands. It's oh. like. Guys, yeah, guys. <laughs> I don't get a fucking applause whenever I to happen. do my fucking job. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But um, but like that that moment was an exception because it's like mm -hmm. it's just such a catastrophic moment in a movie that we've been waiting ten years for. Totally. And it was just so it was done so right and so well and it was so impactful. No, it was, it was like, really really good. Uh, and like the screams and yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. But yeah, but no, it's, so I, uh, I, I'm i also, like I was talking earlier, so I'm a big fan of Dragon Ball, and I went to go see the new Dragon Ball movie, Dragon Ball Super Broly in theaters, mm -hmm. and one of my favorite things about seeing that movie in a theater was seeing just the range of Dragon Ball fans. Right. Like, uh, what really struck me was like, I walked in, and there was this sort of jacked Asian guy wearing a Vegeta costume. Mm -hmm. Like, Vegeta, for those who don't know, is one of the main characters. And it was really decked out. He had like a scouter, which mm -hmm. is like a part of the, it's a whole thing. And then he, they, it was them, it was him and his sort of jockey looking friends, like mm -hmm. all sorts of different, you know, sizes and colors and whatever. They're all kind of cooler looking guys, you know, like dressed sharply, like in shape. Mm -hmm. But they were totally mingling with the more like stereotypical anime yeah. fans. Yeah. If that, like, I, I apologize if that's rude, but like, the, do you know what I mean when I say that? Yeah, like weebs. Sure, like weebs. Yeah. <laughs> and, but, but what was so cool was that, like, this is the common ground. Yeah. Where they found. Yeah. Where they can communicate yeah. and, like, realize that we're all just fans of this thing. Yeah. And it, it was cool. It was like, I actually fucking love being a part of this community. I felt that way when I went to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Yeah, same thing. So when I when I graduated high school, um, my mom's... It, I, we could have gone on, like, a grad trip through the school, but... Um, Emily, my friend, my best friend Emily and I really wanted to go to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, so that, like gra graciously our parents let that happen. And um, my mom, my aunt Chrissy, and Emily and I all went to Orlando, went to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Emily and I, Emily, Emily reawakened my love of Harry Potter nice. because I I read Harry Potter as a kid, and then my friends kind of talked me out of it. My childhood friends talked me out of it. They were like, "Oh, we're not really into Harry Potter anymore. It's really not that cool anymore." Like it's not, and then like my my circle just sort of like didn't involve Harry Potter that much, so I kind of fell off of it. But I never stopped liking it. I just didn't read it anymore because it's what my friends were into. Mm -hmm. um, and then I met Emily, and Emily has always been into fandoms. I literally so, met yeah. Emily because they were talking about 
how hot the dad from Twilight was. Um, the daddy vampire. Um, oh, um, zaddy. The, yeah, the zaddy vampire. And I like turned around and I was like, "You fucking nerd!" Like, <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, nerd. Yeah. Well, like because they oh, funny. Money. they were talking about how hot he was, and the movie hadn't come out yet. And I was like, "How do you know he's hot if the movie's not even out yet? We don't even know who's Yo, playing it." What the fuck? Like, fu- was he just like hot in your mind? Like I can make any guy hot in my mind. I love, I love that. I think that is the perfect idea of what High School Sam was like. Yeah. Like you just hear something that confuses you in the slightest, and you're just like, "That's stupid." What the fucking fuck? <laughs> Are you shut the fuck up, <laughs> idiot? Fuck you. I was like, very <laughs> tightly wound in high school. I'm still tightly wound, but I'm no. a little less so now. Yeah. But yeah, um, so Emily just like Emily was into Twilight. They were into Harry Potter. They were into Lord of the Rings, like all this stuff, and just like really gave me back that community. Yeah. So to go to the Wizarding World with the person who reminded me how much I love this series, and then we were in a place where we were surrounded by fans from all over the world, like all over the States, all like from across like Europe, like people had traveled miles to just like we had from Canada to come to come to this place and appreciate this thing that we loved. And like the wizarding world is amazing. And it is so well done. Like we went when they only had Hogsmeade and like three rides there, but, and it's obviously grown much into a much larger thing now, but like just, standing in line because obviously it's a huge amusement park the lines are so fucking long yeah but you don't even mind because you start talking about something and then somebody turns around and is like hey yeah that thing too you like this part cool who's your favorite character like what's your favorite part in the series like Mm -hmm. who's your favorite actor oh my god like we just missed like the twins because the 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 actors who played fred and george do appearances at wizarding world all the time we're like oh man we just missed them that's crazy what were they like they're so nice oh my god that's so cool i like this like this is my twitter blah 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 like it's so wholesome and it just feels like you just feel so like safe and warm yeah like things like that like movie premieres like opening weekend premieres and amusement parks and um conventions they just like they're nice little pockets of joy in the world that just like you you're you're 100 understood and everybody is on your page you don't have to be like oh okay so like in the seventh book of harry potter like this is referencing this blah 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 like you don't have to catch anybody up on it everybody already knows about the thing that you're talking about everybody loves it just as much as you do otherwise they wouldn't have traveled so far to like to participate in this like thing and um yeah like that's like that is why i still hold out hope for just like fandoms i know fandoms make people have like a knee-jerk reaction because oh, they're the, also very oh, hive mindy and I was scary gonna say, let's pause for a moment and say that all the shit that a lot of crappy fandoms get is 100 percent deserved yeah like yeah <laughs> they brought that upon definitely, themselves definitely definitely let's get real but like at the end of the day we act that way. I feel like we act that way because we're like viciously chasing and violently defending this like glorious community mm-hmm. of just like being understood and knowing that there are people out there who are on the same page as right. you. Right. Like people who you can talk to about this thing you like. Exactly. On a level of how much you like it. Yeah. Where it's like, you know, you can meet someone and be like, I really thought this specific moment was cool. And mm-hmm. they'll be like, I know exactly what you're talking about. It's like a slice of your life experience that is completely understood by another person and it makes you feel so seen and soft and when you walk around like the amusement park i'm going to use amusement park as a specific example but you literally entered the gates into hogsmeade at the orlando um, amusement park and it's just like whoo like yeah you walk around in this space yeah. where you are completely understood. Like, I don't, I, like, it's just so, it is so, oh God, I can't, I don't think words can accurately describe, like, how good that feels. Are there, like, rides at the Wizarding World of Harry yeah. Potter? Yeah, yeah, there are amazing rides. The so roller coasters and when shit? I went, there were three. There have since been more. But the three major ones were the Flight of the Hippogriff, Cool. Which was like a kitty roller coaster, but it was still really cute because there's a giant life size animatronic buckbeak Aww. that you go past, like and he that. like he like bows to you as you like go down a hill. And, and if you cute. don't, he kills you. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, he just he like he like has his little nest, and it's really cute. Um, there is um, I forget what it's called, but it's a it's one ride, but there are two roller coasters, and you get to choose which one you want to go on. And one is the Hungarian horn tail, and the other is a Chinese. Um, 
fireball? Uh, shut up, I don't know. Chinese I forget, fireball sounds like a whiskey. I forget. <laughs> I'm a terrible fan. I'll look it up. I forget what the name of the other. It's the Chinese fire something. Don't worry, fans. I'll look it up. <laughs> but they're two roller coasters, and they go on different tracks. One is red, and one is blue, and you just like ride them. And then there's this amazing ride called Journey to Hogwarts, and um, it's got like a concept. So. You get the on Chinese this bench. fireball. You're the right. Chinese fireball. Okay, right. that is what it's called. Cool. Um, so you get on this like bench. It's like a. It's like a. It's modeled after, um, I think, like the booths on the Hogwarts Express. So you get on a bench that seats like three people, and um, these like screens show up, and like Hermione Granger and Harry Potter and Ron Weasley show up, and Hermione's like, I think I've perfected this charm that allows Muggles to fly, so you can like come with us and hang out with us at Hogwarts. Oh, that's cool. It's, it's, uh, I should, I should preface this with, um, so at Wizarding World, they've built Hogwarts. Like they've oh, that's neat. built the Hogwarts castle. Um, the can, ride can takes, go inside. Yeah. The ride takes place inside the castle. Ah. So, um, they're like, cool. Like muggles can visit Hogwarts now. Hermione has this charm that allows you to fly. You can come play a game of Quidditch with us. And then um, things. That breaks all sorts of rules in I the know. wizard community. I know. Oh, is this park canon? Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> but then things start to go wrong. Oh, do they? And like the Hungarian horntail gets like let loose. Oh, no. And he starts no. chasing you around. And you're like flying. And, you're, and they're like, follow us. Just follow Harry. Just follow Harry. He's gonna right. fire. He'll get you safe. Love your fucking life. And they like take you through. They take you through Aragog's lair, and you get attacked by spiders. They've rebuilt Aragog. <laughs> That's cool. It takes you through the Chamber of Secrets, and you see like the skeleton of the basilisk just like rotting away. Oh, neat! And then you finally go up into like the main tower of the building, and it's and like you hear the dragon like stomping around, and then it whip the ride whips you around, and you're faced with the horn tail, and it breathes fire directly at you. <sighs> <laughs> oh, it's so fucking great, Cameron. It is so, so fucking cool. great. And then, like, it's also amazing. The line for that ride is inexplicably long. Oh, it is like, yeah. it, it is sounds like, awesome. it is a walk in and of its like, it is a hike. You go right. up hills, into buildings, out of buildings. It's a whole fucking walk. But to entertain you, they have put things around the castle as if you're walking through the castle already. That's so cool. you walk past a gate full of mandrakes and they're screaming at you. You walk past Dumbledore's office. You walk through the Defense Against the Dark Arts classroom. Like you, oh my God, it's so, it's so, and everything is like to scale exactly what it would look like. Wow. Like the Defense Against the Dark Arts classroom, it's, it's modeled after the one that you see in the first movie with the giant dragon skeleton suspended from the ceiling. Oh, that's cool. It is so fucking dope. It is so, and then there's like a whole, I think you go into Dumbledore's office at one point and um, the, like the pictures move and talk. They're just, they're videos framed in like picture frames, but like they talk to you. Right. And like give you like little like facts and make little quips at you and stuff like that. It's really fucking cool. That sounds neat. It's really fucking cool. I really want to go with you someday. <laughs> I, now that I, I you've read go. all the books and like obviously like by the time we have the money, you'll have seen all the movies. Like you. Yeah, I'm. One, we're two movies away. And you know they've expanded on it. They have Gringotts Bank now. They have like the Hogwarts Express. You can ride the Hogwarts Express to Diagon Alley out of Hogsmeade. Like it's really fucking cool. It would be really funny if Gringotts was like the Gringotts Bank that they made for the park was like just a bank. Yeah. Like you, you go in and you're like, oh, did you, set, would you set up an account with us today? You're like, well, I mean, I was hoping there was like merchandise. <laughs> like, it, it was like a ride in here. No, mm -hmm. like, oh, no, no. This is a Scotia Bank. <laughs> we bought this building yeah. and we turned it into a Scotia Bank. Yeah. Oh. Uh, okay. okay. It's like when you hear about like Maple Leaf Gardens money, being turned into like a Longos. It's like. Jesus. It, they preserve the outside of the building and on the inside it's, it's a, it's a Longos. It's a grocery store. Speaking of groceries. You know what's bullshit? What's that? You know Chapman's ice cream? Yes. What is up with Chapman's ice cream? Um, is that a Canadian brand? Yes. Okay, so, if, I mean, if this ever reaches American folks, Chapman's ice cream is a, is a ice cream brand that comes in a cardboard box. Mm -hmm. It's Why? very it's very popular because... Well, it's tasty. No, it, well, it's tasty. It's a little tasty. Some of their flavors are hit and miss, but it's very popular the because are good for their me. ice cream is made in a nut-free facility, oh. and it's been trusted by people who have allergen kids for, like, years. Mm. No, it's just, it's just like an iconic Canadian brand, I guess. That's yeah, cool. Yeah. But Chapman's ice cream comes in a cardboard box, and I really have to wonder, why the fuck does yeah. Chapman's ice cream come, come in, in a cardboard, cardboard box? box? What a bad idea. Because... You know what? It's not even that, because, like, Briar's ice cream technically comes in a cardboard box, so you can squeeze it, and it's, like, it's cardboard. It's very... It? 
it's coated in wax, but it's cardboard. Right. I, I feel like Chapman's lacks the wax, though. Yeah, it's just paper. It lacks, lacks it's the wax. It's just paper, yeah. Well, it's, it drives me crazy, because, like, okay, you know if you have, like, a normal pint of ice cream? Mm -hmm. Like, if, with the scoop and the shape of the scoop, you can get, like, 99% yeah. of all of the ice cream out. Yeah. You know, so you really get your money's worth. Yeah. But with Chapman's, you have to throw away what feels like 20% of the fucking ice cream. Yeah. Because you just can't... You yeah, to, like, your knuckles are covered in ice cream by the end of it. It's just fucking ridiculous, it's, in my opinion. It's so you got the, you got this chocolatey yeah. ice cream diaper. Yep. By the end of this whole <laughs> yeah. experience. Yeah, the box is like crinkled in some places from you like trying to like bust it, like just, like grab it with your hands and like force the ice cream out. You can't get any torque because it's all like slippery from the condensation. Yeah. And then it's cardboard. On top of that, exactly, it's like pure cardboard. It's it's the worst. This is the second podcast in a row where we've talked about ice cream at length. Is it? Well, last time was, uh, you know... I have a lot of opinions about ice cream. I mean... I care about ice cream a lot. We've, we've both worked at two separate institutions. Even, even Marble Slab couldn't ruin my love of ice cream. <laughs> I still... Like, like, like working at the Froyo place, I, I don't like soft serve Froyo anymore. I, I just don't. I don't have a taste yeah. for it. I'm done with it. I'm over it. Um, I love ice cream. Me too. I'll always have ice cream. I have soft ice cream. serve. I have ice cream boxed, boxed, like every other night. Dairy Queen. Oh, I do love Dairy Queen. Dairy Store Queen, I think, is my favorite commercial ice cream place. Probably. Well, the problem with Dairy Queen is I don't like to fucking spend forty dollars on like a goddamn blizzard. I do sometimes. If I have the money, I'll do it. Yeah. But it's like, well, the thing is, like, I always feel I stupid it. It buying so ice cream. Good. And I apologize if I said this on the previous podcast where we talked about ice cream. But if you ever want to go out and spend nine dollars on a cone of ice cream, remember that you can go to the grocery store. Yeah. And for and for nine dollars, get two liters yep. of ice cream. Yep. And it's like, sure, it might not taste exactly like it Cameron, does. Cameron, I have seen the no-name, like, 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 tubs of ice, like, you know, like... Like the restaurant ones? Like, like the ones the you buy? Like, the giant, like, four-liter tubs of ice cream? I, I honestly do I've not seen know them, that they I make those. I have seen them sold for less than $10. Four liters. Sometimes you pay nine ninety nine for, like, two scoops of ice cream at, like, a bougie ice cream parlor. It's fucking garbage. It's fucking garbage. It's ridiculous. You buy ice cream from a store. Like, there are novelty flavors. Like you can spend money on it if you want to. You can buy Ben and Jerry's if you want to buy a bougie ass ice cream. Halo Top is like ten dollars per pint, like for one pint of ice cream. But sometimes they have branded flavors like Kit Kat or Oreo. Yeah, the yeah. Oreo ice cream is dope. The Rollo ice cream is my entire childhood. Yeah. My entire childhood was summers where mom would be like, "There's Rollo ice cream in the freezer." <gasps> I'd go over to my friend Mariah's house, and she had a pool. And, like, her mom would be like, does anyone want Rolo ice cream? And we'd be like, yeah! fuck yeah! Fuck yeah! Fuck yeah! Well, Rolo, also underrated chocolate. See, I don't like individual Rolos. No way. I've had Rolos by themselves, and I don't like them. I like Rolos. I prefer caramel. Yeah. Actually, you know, I was reading something about Cadbury lately. Mm -hmm. Did you know the Cadbury recently... I should say, I don't, actually, you know, I don't know how recently. But the, there is a, there, the public opinion of Cadbury has changed. Mm. Which is surprising, because Cadbury, in my, for as long as I've remembered, has been held in really high esteem. Mm. As being like a pretty great chocolate maker. Huh. But apparently they started using sesame oil and stuff. Huh. Or like something like that. Some sort of like really unsavory, uh -huh. like non-environmentally friendly uh -huh. product in their stuff. Uh -huh. and, it's, and they changed their cocoa content. Hmm. And now all their chocolate sucks apparently. I mean, I don't... I, the last couple times I've had Cadbury milk chocolate, I haven't been impressed. Okay. I don't fucking like it. Well, there you it. go. I don't like it. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. People, yeah. the internet was right. And for Nestle. Even though Nestle is... I was say, Nestle is the devil though. Nestle is the <laughs> literal devil. That's why their chocolate tastes so good. <laughs> It's, like it's you're, sinful. You're eating the souls of yeah. people they've killed. Yeah, human sin <laughs> tastes really good. <laughs> I, mean, I, hate, I, mean, I, hate, I love Nest Tea. Yeah. Although I don't feel as bad about drinking Nest Tea as a Canadian because in Canada, I looked this up yesterday, in Canada, Nest Tea is published and distributed by Coca Cola, mm. which of course is another extremely evil company. Yeah, but, but not as not... evil as Nestle. <laughs> I mean, Nestle, Nestle's been funding the Flint water crisis. Yeah. So. <laughs> pretty evil. Yeah. <laughs> well, Coca-Cola and Nestle go to, like, third world countries and, like, steal their water supplies and shit. Yeah. Like, with, like, yeah. you know, no permits and all that. Oh, they probably do buy it, technically, yeah. but it's not, like, ethical or yeah. probably not entirely legal. I remember one time at work, um, somebody wanted the, um, like, the no-name brand of uh, a 24 case of water. And we didn't have it, so I substituted it with the only other brand of 24, like the only other 24 case of water that we had, which was Nestle, yeah. Pure Life Water. And she called to pick up her order, and I was like, oh, unfortunately, we're out of the no-name brand of water. Um, it, it's not, I should say, 
it's not the actual like no name like the yellow no name brand i'm changing the name as to so as to conceal my actual workplace but oh, like, anyways it was an off brand yeah. water bottle it's the chucks grocery store exactly bo- brand water exactly okay um i was like oh we didn't have the chucks grocery store brand of water so we had to substitute it with nestle and is that okay and she was like no no i won't take it i'll never buy nestle Damn. and i was like <laughs> Okay. Cool, lady. Fuck. I will take it off. Took you want some Dasani? Like, God, yeah. no. Jesus, what the fuck? I don't want, like, I don't want fucking rock water. Yeah, I want off water. Yeah. <laughs> Why does this water taste expired? God, what a horrible, horrible brand that yeah. is available everywhere. Dasani is pretty gross. Like, you can't get Nestle water from a vending machine. You can only seem to get Dasani, and it's the worst. I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know what it is. But, um, I was going to say something about... This podcast is sponsored by Dasani <laughs> Water. <laughs> okay, let's get a message from my sponsor. <laughs> the Nestle Corporation. <laughs> Go on www.nestle.com to, uh, to, st- <laughs> to fund the stealing of water supplies yeah, yeah, yeah. all over the earth. Yeah. Um, Evian. Water you... so good you'd suck a dick for it. <laughs> <laughs> what is so good you better suck a dick for it <laughs> did you know that nestle owns like tons of shit yeah even like the journos yeah like, like like tons of shit if you look if you actually look at like the back you know of your boxes I'm like gonna... you would be amazed at how much is owned by one major conglomerate like coca-cola nestle Unilever, the like beauty brand that owns Dove, but also yep. like Old Spice and Olay, like. Well, I don't like. Um, S.C. Johnson. I don't know like, for sure, but isn't like all of the all of the stuff on the earth boils down to being owned by like five companies or something? Yeah. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Disney's one of them. Yeah. <laughs> well, Disney's two of them now. Yeah. But here, like for for instance, like th- there's, a, there's a great Wikipedia. If you ever okay, if you ever really want to not buy Nestle products, there's a great Wikipedia article called "List of Nestle Brands," mm. and they go. All the way down. So, from the top, there are beverages, cereals, chilled, chocolate, confectioner, baked goods, food service products, frozen food, health care, infant foods, performance nutrition, pet care, refrigerated products, seasoning, shelf t- uh, shelf stable, yogurt, and then there's even a section about shareholders. Jesus. Did you know they own 30% of L'Oreal? As well as Garnier, Maybelline, and Lancome? Yeah, so even if you buy ch- good shampoo, you're supporting See, this Nestle. Is this is my thing. Is that like... <sighs> yeah. Um, that's fucked up. We gotta we gotta learn how business works as consumers because like you think that you're switching brands to not support brands that you don't like, but really you're st- because they have shares in everything. Like people have their hands in everything. You're still kind of supporting them. Fuck. It's they really own fucking hard. They own all of the best chocolate bars. Yeah. From the top, you're looking at Coffee Crisp. Mm-hmm. You're looking at Butterfingers. Mm-hmm. You're looking at you're looking at milky bars. Mm-hmm. Looking at oh, of course Nestle Crunch. Of course. Um. The oh best my god. And most never seen chocolate. Bar. Are you fucking kidding me? They own Big Turk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> There's someone out there who likes Big Turks. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> I love that one tweet that was like, have you ever actually had Turkish Delight? Like, it's good, but it's not anything to betray your family over to a white queen. <laughs> no, Turkish Delight is like candle wax. Yeah, like, I've it, never it, had it before. My mom likes them. They own Smarties, which blows. I'm going to look up the frozen food. This should be a big one. They own, they own both Delicio and DiGiorno. They own yeah. Hot Pockets. Okay. Okay, no, put that list away. I want to talk about something. Is Delicio and DiGiorno's the same fucking thing, or let, is it let like, me find out? No, I swear to God, because in the states, there like they, there's the catchphrase: "It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno's." Yeah. But in Canada, I have always known it's not delivery, it's Delicio. So according, and I see the pizza boxes for DiGiorno's in like American memes and stuff like that, and it's the same box. It just says DiGiorno yeah. instead. So according to Why? the according to the like literal sentence. DiGiorno and Delicio are co-owned brand of frozen pizzas sold in the United States and Canada, respectively, and their current mm-hmm. subsidiaries of Nestle. So, Canada, it's Delicio. In the States, it's, it's DiGiorno. DiGiorno. That's it's, it's so the, it's, weird. That's just it. That's just that's what it is. That's so weird. Well, it's like, you know, um, Kit Kat. They're the same pizza. Like, they're, they're literally the same pizza. Same ingredients, same recipe, same, like, 
production, technique, everything. It's just they slap a different name on it, one for Canada and one for the U.S., which is so weird. Yeah. So weird. You know what's also super weird is that... Mm, how does this go? I'm sorry. This, was, this wasn't well read of me. I just, but ooh. KitKat is owned by two companies, and it's hmm. different in, the, in Canada. Yeah, KitKat is Nestle, I'm pretty sure. In Canada, Here it's it Nestle, but... It's, I don't know. That would I, explain the different branding altogether for it. You no, know, in the states, it's owned by something else. Okay. The, the, the states is. Get oh, there. Shite. Get there. Get there. Sorry, this is a this is a big article. Who else would own it in the states? Quaker. No, it's whoever makes. It's Cadbury. Uh, interesting. Yeah, because whoever makes yeah, because Cadbury. Yeah, interesting. So does Kit Kat like suck in the states? <laughs> then? I, I guess so. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the problem. I've right? never had one. Oh man. I, what? Oh, sorry, in the in States. In the States, I was yeah. like, Kit Kat is your favorite chocolate. We had Kit Kats yeah. a week ago. I know. Like, yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? No, 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 in the States. I've never had one in the States before. Um, fast food in the States? Sucks. So good. What are you talking about? No, I, I hate fast food What are you food talking about? I, oh, I my God. Had, well, it depends. What are you talking about? KFC, what are you talking about? KFC in the States is amazing. I've only had McDonald's in the States and it made, like maybe like a Dunkin' Donuts. Okay. And I was very disappointed in both. Okay. But I've never been to any of like the legendary burger places. Where like In and Out, like, or Sonic, Shake Shack. Peppers. I will try Shake Shack so bad. Yeah. I've heard so many good things about Shake Shack. Yeah. Um, we have Five Guys though. Is Five Guys a thing in the states? Yeah. Is Five Guys own a U.S. company? I think so. Look it up. Most things are. Back on the Google. Most things are. But um, Sonic. Yeah, I remember. Um, did you ever watch Peachtree TV as a kid? On cable? Yeah, totally. Yeah, so... It, before, it became something else later. Yeah, it became something else later, but, like, I... Yeah, I used to love watching Peachtree TV because it was a... It's a... it's a For those who don't know, it's a channel that was based in Atlanta, Georgia. And for some reason, it was just included in most basic cable packages on... it, Like, in Canadian soil. Yeah. So, um... You would, like, watch it, but it was just... It was purely American commercials and stuff like that. And they would always advertise Checkers and Sonic. I would always see those two commercials, and they looked so fucking good. I know it's fast food, so, like, it's obviously going to be ugly, but it just looks so fucking good. There's a really great... um so good. You ever heard of the YouTube channel Mega64? No. Mega, the Mega64 is just a... It's an old, like, sketch video game-based mm -hmm. YouTube channel. Like, mm -hmm. they're, like, old YouTube. They've been around forever. Mm -hmm. They did this really funny skit where they go to Sonic... And they eat the food, and they're all kind of disappointed by it. But they're clearly talking about Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> they're like, "Yeah, you know, you go and like you eat it, and it's just not like it like it was before. You know, like it used to be like really good back in like the '90s, and then like now it's just like they're doing these weird things. Like, what what's this like like corn burger or something? <laughs> like, like, like it's obviously it's a joke about like yeah. the fact that Sonic has you know that's a great video Probably you should go watch it funny. if you haven't seen it I'm not, I'm not doing it a good I need service but it's yeah, really funny that's funny um, American, and like there's just so many different kinds have you no wonder they have such a weight problem there there's so many different uh, kinds of fast food we have so like, cheap we have like McDonald's obviously Wendy's Burger King which depending on where you live isn't even that popular no um, I can think of one Burger King in KW there's one in here too like, yeah there's only one that I can think of yeah I'm trying to think McDonald's, Wendy's, I guess like Subway. Yeah, but Subway's everywhere. Burger King. Subway was at one point the most popular fast food chain of all time. What else? Or uh, at least of the year. I guess Harvey's. Yeah. Harvey's is like semi-popular. Um, Do you have a particular... I know I what your favorite of, is. I can't think of many like fast food... Right. Chain. We have like five fast food chains here. Whereas like yeah. in America, and it also depends on like where you live... So, like, in the South, like, Church's Chicken is really fucking popular, uh -huh. you know? Popeyes are also way more popular in the States, like, way more frequent than here. Here, definitely. Well, something you also have to remember is that, like, we don't get a lot of independent places in mm -hmm. Canada. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a little bit better in KW, but in Mississauga, it's like, you're only going to a brand place. Yeah. There's no mom and shop, mom and pop, like, pizza shops. Hmm. Pizza parlors, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I have noticed that. In Mississauga. Like, we're pretty much ordering Domino's. Like, that's just yeah. about it. There's, like, yeah. 90 Domino's here. Yeah. Um... I was, gonna, I was going to so ask rare. you. Uh, was that? Dominoes are so rare in Kitchener. They're getting a little bit more popular. Really? I've noticed I've noticed a couple more springing up. There was one by my old house in Waterloo. Yeah. I suppose that's in Waterloo, though. Yeah, that was that was one of the, like, one or two that I could think of. There's more popping up now. But, mm. It's um, just so popular. It's usually, like, you move to an area. It's cheap, too. And, like, the Ma and Pa shop hand, like, gives you, like, a flyer in the mail, and you're like, oh, cool, let's try this pizza place. And then that's just, like, where you always order from. Yeah. 
No, you stay if you stay in the coupon like specifications of Domino's, you have a good time because you're gonna get a lot of food mm -hmm. for a good price. Mm. Last time we ordered Domino's, we got two large pizzas, some chicken, and some 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 cheese sticks, and some sauces. It came out to like forty five bucks, but we saved fifteen with the coupon. Hmm. Like, that's not bad. Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, that's probably just their marketing working. But there's some mom and <laughs> shops with good deals though. There are. Like Bianca's? The, ooh, Bianca's. Ooh, Bianca's. Ooh, mm. I'm a big fan of even two for, like, two for one. Yeah. Twice the deal. Twice the deal. That's the one. Twice the deal is two, good. Two for one is the one in Mississauga. Mario's by my house is Mario's is delicious. It's one, one of my favorite ones. They do they do extra cheese so mm. right. So yeah. right. I yeah. love it. You're all about that extra cheese life. I'm, I'm all about that extra cheese life. I was going to ask you what your favorite fast food place is, but I think I know. What's that? A&W. Hmm. Tied with Harvey's. Mm-hmm. For burgers, I mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I, I actually do genuinely. I mean, like, I always go to a &W for the onion rings because mm -hmm. they're the only place that seasons their onion rings. It's but not just, but like, they also make some onions. pretty wholesome burgers. Yeah, they do make a good burger. What's crazy is, like, I know this, like, we were talking about Emily earlier. Emily, yeah. Sam's friend, used to work at a particular a and location mm -hmm. that we don't necessarily need to go into detail about. No, we about. don't need to. But I already pissed off her manager on Facebook, so. Like, <laughs> it's a war over. Already, like, we won already, that. She already, she already has a reason to hate me. So. We won that fight, for sure. <laughs> um... But what was I about to say? I went to that location, and this is before I really knew Emily well, but she recognized me, mm -hmm. and she made me this fucking burger. And to this day, it is the best fast food burger. Well, Emily's just a fantastic I've cook. ever had. Oh, well, I mean, I mean, anybody course. who went there and didn't piss Emily off, which, like, granted, everybody who pissed off Emily had, like, they, like they, they pissed off Emily, because Emily's the nicest soul in the, in the entire She's world. She's pretty fucking forgiving. Um, but... Anybody who Emily wanted to make a burger for got the best tasting burger they could Boy, have howdy, received. Because yeah. Emily's talk. just a good ass cook. No, it's re real talk. Like to this day, yeah, I I've never had a burger that tasted more like you know you know what it is to me is like it tasted like a home cooked burger, mm -hmm. which is something you never get at a fast food place. Mm -hmm. Like Burger King tastes like garbage. Yep. You have A and W, which tastes I'd say the closest in terms of like fast food burgers yeah, like a diner you have harvey's that has a really unique taste because they, they do the char broiled yeah and then you have mcdonald's which just tastes like mcdonald's McDonald's. Yeah, it has a taste all on its own, and like sometimes you crave a McDonald's burger. McDonald's burgers make you forget that you like barbecue. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. Actually, you know, I, you're like, I want a McDonald's burger, and then you have a, a, a like a barbecued burger at like a barbecue, like what? a backyard barbecue, and you're like, oh shit, this is not McDonald's. This you might be a controversial anymore. statement. This might even be the end of my relationship. Well, you don't like barbecue. I don't like barbecue very much. It's not my favorite. Well, barbecue is very messy, and you don't like messy foods. Well, see, that, that's it, too, but I also, like, I don't know, man. The You're whole, not like, a huge red meat person, either. Neither, yeah, but the, the whole charbroiled texture, it just tastes like charcoal. It just tastes burnt. Hmm. It, I, that's all I taste. Hmm. Versus, like, when you... I feel like you haven't had good barbecue. Maybe. Because, like, good barbecue is smoky. Yeah. But it's not burnt. I do love smoky stuff. Yeah. We went to, the, we went to this great place in Kitchener called the Lancaster Smokehouse, mm -hmm. which is... Whoa, Nelly. Mm -hmm. Some great fucking barbecue. Mm -hmm. Holy crap. Mm -hmm. Like, that was the good shit. Yeah. They were on You Pretty Gotta penny. Eat Here. Did, were they? Yeah. Recently? No, not recently. Okay. A while ago. That's so cool, though. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> what I love about that, and what I hate about that, is that places like that it get lots of hype for the restaurant, okay. but then it also gives them a reason <gasps> to, to make everything more dish. expensive. Yeah, yeah, and also to do one dish really well and nothing else. Well, we went to that other place in Nova Scotia that yeah. was on You Gotta Eat it was Here. like fish and chips place. And that was pretty mediocre. It was I'm not going to lie. It was very just okay. Yeah, but we also, like, we also, I mean, this was my fault, but we, I greatly underestimated just how long the Cabot Trail would have been. Mm -hmm. And we finished that bitch in, like, 45 minutes. Yeah. And we had eaten, like, two hours ago. Yeah. At, at the best place we went to. Yeah. The Rusty, the Rusty Anchor, Anchor. Where we went again. Yeah. Which, where I bought one of my favorite hoodies. Yeah. And I swear to God, I will go to the Rusty Anchor tomorrow. Yeah. Like, I fucking yeah. love that place. I think about that place on a regular basis. Do you remember that goddamn lobster roll that I got? Yeah. They came in the two of them. And, like, you had, oh, eaten, you had eaten almost exclusively so lobster good. rolls for the entire trip. Because you were like, we're on the fucking East Coast. Like, of course I'm going to eat a fucking lobster roll. And I was like, you're absolutely right, babe. Eat a lobster roll. Eat, I, eat like, oh. five lobster rolls the entire... Eat nothing but lobster rolls all day long. And you, had, you had done exactly that. Eat nothing but lobster rolls. And you ordered this lobster roll at the Rusty Anchor. And it was the best lobster roll. Oh, yeah. That I have ever had to this day. I like, uh, t like seriously, I, it was something like. Ooh, remember that lobster mac and cheese you ordered? Damn, I yeah, I was yeah. just going to bring that up. Yeah. But I so I was on two things for Nova Scotia. I was on chowders, mm. and I was on lobster rolls. Well, you're on the East Coast. Like, what else are you supposed to eat? What are you gonna fucking eat? And 
everywhere at Knockman Park. Like, it only got better. Actually, we went yeah. to that one pizza place when we were visiting Alyssa, which was pretty good. Tom's, Tom's Pizza. Tom's Pizza. Yeah. It was tasty. Yeah, I liked it, it was good. It was very homegrown, you know, yeah. like very like yeah, yeah. very quaint. Yeah. But I have to say that that rusty anchor lobster roll. I took a bite and was like, like for like first thing on my head, I was like, you got, you have to try this. Like you, 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 you don't soft understand. And fresh. It was and crisp like, on the outside, soft yeah. on the inside. And like the the mixture, like the lobster mixture, wasn't too creamy, mm. but it was just right. And like it was evenly peppered, so and, it and had the like, service was really nice. Flavor. Yeah, the server was very nice. She was really sweet. Yeah, and I was like, "What's your favorite thing?" And she was like, "That lobster mac and cheese that we got going over yeah, there, yeah, by." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> That's what she like. <laughs> oh, there, by. <laughs> well, you see, there, by. We got the we got the lobster mac and cheese going. <laughs> All right. She was very nice. I love East Coast Canada. I remember it's one um, of my favorite places in the world. I wanted to try oysters because I was like, "Oh, they're like a delicacy." And, like, you're not going to get... It. Like, I know that oysters are very black and white. Like, either you like oysters mm. or you do not like oysters. Definitely. Um, and I was like, well, like, I'm on the do East Coast. Do or die. Coast. Like, I'm on yeah. the East Coast. They travel a lot less far. I'm going to try oysters anywhere. It's going to be here. So I was like... I, I turned to her and I was like, how are the oysters here? And she was like, oh, well, you know, like, they're oysters. They, like, we serve them on the half shell. And, like, we get them, like, up, like, half an hour up the road. And I was <laughs> right like... Right over there. And she pointed out the road. Yeah, she pointed she, like, out the pointed window. Out the, pointed out like, the you point, see that the bay over there? Sea. That's yeah. where we She's get like, them that's from. that's where we get them from. And I was like, well, all right then. Like, here, like... This here oyster, 45 minutes ago, yeah. was alive. Was alive. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, that's how fresh it is. <laughs> And then I tried it and I didn't like it. And I was like, well, I guess I just don't like oysters but then. But you got to try it though. Yeah, I which did. Which was the important part. I did, yeah. Do you remember? I can say, I can say, I have had probably the freshest oysters that I can get for the amount of money that I'm willing to spend. Totally. And pro- like, probably better quality for the money that I was willing to spend. And uh, I don't like them, so I don't like oysters. Well, do you remember uh, on the way to Nova Scotia, we were in, we were just outside of Nova Scotia, I believe. I think we were in New Brunswick still. Okay. And we stopped off at that like mountainside uh, convenience store, gas station, restaurant. Yes. Do you remember that place? Yeah, that place that was way more expensive than it had any right to be. (laughs) Way more expensive than anywhere else we ate on the trip. For like a gas station, truck stop, piece of... Yeah, we went Diner. in and we bought these fun scratchy sweaters because yeah. we were goofing around. Those like and then, weird, those like weird like burlapy sweaters that stoners yeah. wear all the time. Yeah, 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 I, yeah, I like that sweater actually. It's it's like weirdly comfy. I don't yeah. know, yeah. but um, we went in and then we had we first of all we sat down and there were three. The place was completely dead. There were three servers working, yeah. and I don't think we got served till about fifteen minutes after we sat. Oh, down. it was longer than fifteen minutes. Like I actually it was remember, ridiculous. we we looked over to the bar and was like. Like, hi, yeah. can we maybe get some... And they're like, yeah. Yeah. It's a bit back to, like, whatever yep. they're doing. Yep. And then I was maybe like... Maybe it's just because we're from Ontario and we're dicks. But, like, it took way too <sighs> fucking there, long we for there. how not busy it was to There's get no, served. What, do they smell that we were Ontarians? Probably. But it's like... So we went in. And we had the food. And the food was extremely mediocre. Yeah. And uh, we, we noticed that a, a table over tried to pay with debit. But mm-hmm. they were like, oh, it's cash only. Mm. So it's like, oh, okay. I'll go to the I'll go to the ATM and get some cash. Yep. I'll get like forty bucks. How expensive could it be? Dude, it was sixty five dollars. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, Are you fucking kidding me? Sixty five dollars? I don't pay sixty five dollars at some of the nice restaurants that we yeah. eat at. Yeah. Like that's fucking ridiculous, Sam. Sixty five dollars. Sixty five fucking dollars. It was fucked up. For like oh I forget I forget what we had, but we just, I had like we, a burger. Yeah. Or like something. It was just something because we hadn't eaten in a really long time and we had driven all day. And, and we, we had wanted, another like four hours of driving to go. Yeah. And we just wanted something that would tide us over. And we were like, well, we don't have time to be picky. So we'll just stop here. This is the first restaurant we've seen in miles. First gas station. We, that was yeah. just, you know what it was? It was just after that like that, long like, break. stretch of land. The no man's no, land in Eastern yeah. Canada where there's literally nothing. Yeah. It's wilderness as yeah. far as the eye could see. Gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. Like really, really fucking nice. But like fill up your tank. Even if you don't think you need gas. Like, oh, fill we, up your tank. I got low. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, for, for for context, my mom and dad, who have done the drive before, were like, you're going to reach the no man's land. There's one gas station before it. Fill up, even if you're at a quarter tank. Fill up. Yeah. And I was like, whatever. I get there, and um, we had recognized that this is like the last gas station. And we're like, okay, you know what? I'm on half. I'm going to fill up because this makes sense. From a full tank, I got down to one quarter. Damn. And I was like, like I was trying to play cool for you because I don't, yeah. don't want to freak you out. But yeah. I was like... Oh man, I really hope <laughs> we, see, we, see I hope we get a gas station soon. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, this is, this is mm, yeah. Yeah. pretty pretty fucking long. Yeah. But yeah, I love that trip. Good. I have really fond memories of that trip. 
from start to finish. Yeah. Such a good trip. Yeah. So great. If you ever get a chance to go out to the east coast of Canada, dear listeners, please do. It's like it's gorgeous. Mm. You meet some of the nicest people. Nicest people. It's it's such a different way of life. It's so relaxed. I love my favorite, probably my favorite part of the trip. We went out there because our friend Alyssa um, was had a, had a job out there stage managing a play, a couple of plays um, for Theater Bedeck, which is a city in Nova Scotia and small town in Nova Scotia. Yeah, um, I was like, I don't know much of a city. <laughs> so we just made like a road trip a out of it to of go buildings. see her. And um, I was sitting in the theater waiting for the show to start and these two older people, three older people in front of me were having a conversation. Mm-hmm, I remember that. And the lady, like, it, the conversation, they were, like, having, like, a light scuff, like, a light debate. Not really a debate. Like a, they were like a, chatting. They were, like, bickering at yeah. each other, like, the fun way that you do with friends. Mm-hmm. And she was like, no, 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 it's like this. And she turns around to me and she goes, Right? <laughs> as if like I had always been a part of the conversation like I wasn't paying attention I was doing my like Ontario like city girl thing right. where I like I recognize that you're having a conversation I'm gonna politely look down on my phone in order to like check out and let you have your private space in this public space mm-hmm. um, but I was just like 100% able to jump into that conversation at any given time oh totally they were so fucking nice the nicest fucking people so friendly the best food mm-hmm. you wanna go down to Nova Scotia you wanna go to Cape Britain Island mm-hmm. you wanna do the Cabot Trail mm-hmm and there's tons of sights to see. Mm-hmm. We didn't get to do um, the fort. We didn't get to do... Um, the fart. The, the fart? The fart. No, it's a fort. What the fuck is it called? Knox. <laughs> I, I don't think it's Fort Knox. No. Um, but there's a fort out there that's a tourist attraction that I went to when I was little. And oh, they got so many cool like natural stuff to see. Yeah. It's the best place in the world. Even if opinion. you're not an outdoorsy person, it's just like, it's really pretty. Mm-hmm. It's really, really pretty and really nice and you can eat. And it's just the best, and it's very relaxing. Yeah, so you like heard it. You heard it here first, folks. The Chill Spot Podcast fully endorses Nova Scotia. <laughs> Say it loud and proud. <laughs> and New Brunswick too, for what it's worth. New, yeah, Brunswick, New Brunswick was fine. New Brunswick was dope. I, we just didn't spend any time there. Yeah, New Brunswick just kind of reminded me of like here. It was just like. Well, we didn't do all of New Brunswick. We like spent one night in Edmonston. That like. Wasn't the night. We stayed like in a hotel. A, I like a fucking... Like a Best Western. Yeah, like a Best Western. Yeah. And then we went to like Boston Pizza for <laughs> dinner. reminds me. Like, Do you fucking remember when we were in that hotel and you and I were chatting, like just reminiscing. I had just finished a drawing and you were like, God, do you remember like, like let's watch like Vines. Remember Vines? <laughs> And then, like, we're like, I was like, yeah, fine. Like, let's watch a Vine compilation. Yeah. And we, like, curled up in bed and watched one Vine compilation and didn't laugh once. Yeah, it was, like, half an hour long, too. It and then, like, the like, longer like, like, the video ended and we were just sitting there, like, in silence. <laughs> and I, like, got up, like, went to the other bed and, like, lied down, like, stared at the ceiling. <laughs> it, was, it was, like, we didn't talk for, like, ten minutes. Yeah. I was like, like are, you, are you hungry? <laughs> Like, it was just such a colossal disappointment. Yeah, yeah. It was oh too my bad. god! Because it was just a bunch of like those shitty deep fried SpongeBob memes. Yeah, it's, like, not actually. No, funny. it was pretty shit. Yeah, rest uh, of the trip was really good though. Yeah, so go to Nova Scotia. Yeah, support the Drake Cinematic Universe. Cry when you go to movies. Um, Remember watch, to love yourself. Watch a music video. Watch a music video. Well, keep up with music videos because your favorite artists are still making music videos. Mm-hmm. And you would be surprised at how interesting and complimentary they are to the songs that you love. Listen, if you're so going to watch one up, music video music for the rest video. of your life, go watch the Humble music video by Kendrick Lamar. Do you, watch the DNA video. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, I, I think the Humble video is still like... Fine, but like the DNA goat. video is... Yeah, like that. It's got Don Great. Cheadle in it. Yeah. Got my boy Don. Scott. Love that guy. He's not your boy. <laughs> so, that's sorry, m- m- Mr. That Cheadle, I'm sorry. <laughs> I love Don Cheadle. I have nothing but respect yeah. for that guy. Yeah. We but do listen, call him Mr. Cheadle around here. We're over time. Uh, as always, our Twitters and social... Hour. We should do a two-hour podcast one day. I like these. <laughs> I, mean, I don't want to I don't want to bloat the audience, though. I like talking to you. Oh, that's nice. I just like I just like these, like... Because, you know, we, we always... We film... Uh, Let's Plays, and those are great. I love those. I don't ever want to stop, but, like, I just like these moments where we just, like, sit and we joke around. We do that in real life all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's um, actually just dead silence after You're this. basically just listening Once to our mics relationship. Once the are off. But, like, I, I like these. I know. I like we these, We just, like, too. sit, and, like, no one's allowed to interrupt us, and we just, like, sit and talk and joke and have a we'll good time. We'll do a Christmas special that'll be two hours long. Oh, my God. There you go. Yes. Yeah, during your family's Christmas party, so that we can... <laughs> we'll just set this up. So we can duck out. Yeah. Set yeah. up our fort. 
Yeah, your cousins will come in drunk and like it'll be impossible, but we'll try. But as for always, folks, our social media will be in the description. Mm-hmm. Feel free to shoot us a follow. And don't forget to like and share with your friends. I hope people talk to me once this all comes out. Talk to you? Oh. Yeah, you know, like... Sorry, I thought you meant, like, your friends. I was like, I don't think anyone's going to stop talking to no, you. No, 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 no. Like, I... Oh, God. I want to be, like, Chrissy Teigen level of, like, talk to me on Twitter. That'd you know cool. what I mean? I would yeah. love that shit. Yeah. I would love that shit. a lot shit. of pressure, but I think that's cool. There's a lot of pressure because she also deals with a lot of bullshit. Oh, definitely. Well, who doesn't? Oh, man. If, like, one day we ever get a real studio, can we get Chrissy Teigen and John Lennon... John Lennon. <laughs> John Lennon. <laughs> Chrissy Teigen, Teigen and her husband, John and Lennon. John Lennon. We brought him back from the dead, folks. We dug up John Lennon's corpse, Fuck. and now he's sitting on our couch. Fuck. Mr. Lennon, how are you? And it's just like, jaw falls off. <laughs> tink, 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 tink. Anyways, yeah. I feel like Chrissy Teigen and John Legend are just like the grown-up version of us. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, folks, uh, I've done the outro three times now, and I think we're going to sign off. Thank you very much for what, listening. Watch the Drake Cinematic Universe. Yep. Watch music videos. Yep. Go um, to Nova Scotia. Go to Nova Scotia. Um, Chrissy Teigen, if you ever need more friends, I doubt you do, but... You call us. Call us. Call us. Yeah. Our numbers are not public, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. Bye.